Hey, welcome back guys. Thanks for joining me. It's Dan with Pico Mortgages with another weekly mortgage roundup. Uh, this one is going to be the last one for March of 2022 and there's been a lot going on. Um, we're going to get into the interest rates and some stuff that's happening here in Canada and in other parts of the world. So let's jump into it. Meet, uh, our weekly mortgage roundup. We start off today in London, Ontario. So here's what London, Ontario City Council has tabled uh, heading into the spring. And no surprise here, like many other municipalities across Ontario and Canada, they are looking to combat long-term housing. So the uh, agenda here will focus on that long-term housing. And what they're trying to do is reduce the amount of short-term rentals that are happening in the city. So. Uh, Airbnb, VRBO, these vacation rental um, websites. What's happening is a lot of people are shifting that long-term uh, tenant housing into short-term housing, and it's putting a lot more of a strain on the existing supply. So they're gonna try and tackle that this spring. We'll see what comes of it. Um, there are a few more rules that are going around the short-term rental housing licenses and also only allowing it done on primary residences. So this is trying to eliminate companies come in, buy up properties, and then use this as a business. So that's what's happening in London, Ontario. Now we shift focus over here uh, to BNN Bloomberg. So Bloomberg had an article that came out. April would be too early for supersized rate rate hikes, according to CIBC. So CIBC is not denying that there are rate hikes that are happening around the corner. They're just not sure if this is gonna happen in April uh, because there's some speculation that we're gonna see upwards of a 50 basis point hike. Remember, this is for variable rate mortgages, or are they gonna wait until June? And so this article just kind of jumps into what the CIBC economists are predicting that's going to happen. And uh, spoiler alert, it uh, looks like they're predicting that they'll wait until June to, uh, to do that rate hike. So again, a lot of this is just focused around interest rates, what's happening with fixed and variable. And this has a trickle down effect, right? So we're seeing this with um, housing in the larger metropolitan areas. And generally across Canada, where there's not as much demand as we had running up until the spring market. So uh, still getting bidding wars in, in many areas, but it's just not as heated. And you know that was to be expected as interest rates rise, people are being a little bit more mindful of what it's gonna cost monthly to own a home. So that's, uh, that's out of BNN. That segues into RBC. So another major bank here, RBC risk model shows that Canadian real estate prices can fall up to 30% and no growth is expected. Guys, I think this is a little bit of sensationalism that's happening right now, to be honest. Better Dwelling is known more for their, um, uh, I don't wanna say doom and gloom, but a lot of doom, maybe a little bit of gloom. Uh, forecasts when it comes to real estate. Now, this is no different. So they're predicting that prices can fall up to 30%. This is actually coming out of a, uh, a report. But uh, if you look down here at the bottom, I did find buried in the article that the upside scenario shows home prices increasing by double digits. So again, double digit growth is predicted they just didn't include it in the title. I don't know if that's just sensationalism or what, but it could be anywhere from 30% decline up to 11% uh, growth. Uh, that's a huge swing. We don't know really. I guess we have to take a wait and see approach. But uh, if any of what's happened in the last couple of years is an indicator, I don't think we're going to see a 30% correction, especially with the supply issues that we're still facing. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Immigration and the amount of housing that's being built is just not there. I actually saw an article, I didn't include it this time, but uh, none about a Callaway. There is a big crunch for affordable housing up there. And I think the government only, they were looking for three, 4,000 units to be built up there to help with affordable housing. They've been pushing for this for a while and the government's only been able to commit to 100 units or 100 properties. So you can see like even up north, we're having issues with, um, with just getting the housing situation under control all right uh oh this didn't this actually didn't show up on here but let me draw it in for you guys because uh that is where interest rates have gone 
for March. So March was basically here. Today, we're up here. It's been almost a 1% increase. We ended the week, and you can see it down here. We ended the week at 2.27%. This is your five-year bond yield, and the bond yield is what's dictating our fixed-rate mortgages. And what's going on with fixed-rate mortgages? Well, we closed it the week this week. I'm seeing interest rates climbing almost to 4% on a five-year fixed term. Depends if you're doing a rental property or refinance was a little bit higher. If you're getting an insured mortgage, a little bit lower. But guys, this used to be alternative lending territory. I actually spoke to a BDM business development manager, one of the lending partners that uh, we partner up with, and he had said he hasn't seen anything like this in a very, very long time. In fact, since he's been in the industry to, to say A banks, the AAA banks, the credit unions, are now seeing interest rates close to 4%. So, you know, if you have a renewal coming up, if you're having uh, considerations on a refinance, now's the time to do it. If you, especially if it's in the next 18 months or so, you wanna make sure that you can capitalize on the lower rates, because uh, the trend is, as you can see, it's going upwards. So keep an eye on that, guys. And a little bit on the US, and this was an interesting story that came out of uh, NBC News and uh, they just spoke basically so we get the president joan biden is trying to put restrictions uh, and sanctions by seizing yachts and other uh, assets that uh, uh, russian oligarchs are holding on to but the one thing that has kind of escaped them is real estate so for decades real estate uh, has been a very viable asset for um, Russian millionaires and billionaires to put their money into and, and so there's a lot of money that's flowing into the US market and they're just not able to trace it. So this kind of goes through what's going on right now because foreign uh, foreign individuals and companies are owning quite a bit and we're, we're seeing it here too in Canada. Um, but that is obviously of concern because uh, if they're trying to put sanctions against the uh, Russia and the economy there, but a lot of that, those assets are tied up in U.S. Uh, real estate. Anyway, that's what's happening in the U.S. Uh, interest rates are still up, and uh, you know we're likely going to see an uh, interest rate hike by the Feds. Um, but that's what I got today, guys, on your uh, mortgage roundup for the week. Let me know what you're thinking, what you're seeing with mortgage rates. Uh, has this put any damper on you going out there to buy a property, or were you considering refinancing, maybe taking some money out doing renovations, and now? reconsidering that option love to hear from you thanks again for everything guys you can like comment and as always uh, you can subscribe too i'd love if you did that take care and i'll see you on the next one